working as a software engineer is not at all what I expected it to be. And in today's video, I want to share with you five things I wish I knew before I started working. Hi, I'm Yulia Eskin, a Silicon Valley tech leader and a career coach for software engineers. This is the right channel for you if you want to get promoted, become a tech lead, or just be a better engineer. So let's dive in. Before I started working as a software engineer, I remember thinking that most of my time will be dedicating to writing code and working on cool products. I had no idea that working in software development meant a lot more than just coding or that so much communication and teamwork would be absolutely crucial. I want to share with you five things I learned in the decade that I've been working as a software engineer that I wish I knew before I got started. Number one and the most important thing is that being an engineer doesn't mean you'll be writing code 100% of your time. The software engineering role, to my surprise, was so much more than just coding. In fact, all of the performance reviews and promotion rubrics that you'll see are so much more than just about technical performance. Aside from technical performance, it also includes teamwork and collaboration and the impact of the work that you're doing. I actually cover performance and promotion rubrics in detail in this video above. Being an engineer means that you're part of a product development process, and that is much more than just coding. Coding is merely only one part of product development. The other things you'll also have to do are understand and dig into product requirements because it's absolutely crucial that first you understand what it is that you're going to be implementing. You'll also have to work with a lot of counterparts in product, in UX, and in testing, QA, in order to even understand how everything that you're building works. Expect a lot of brainstorming and problem solving as a team before you even arrive at what needs to be done. You'll also be documenting the work that you'll be doing both in the code and sometimes externally by creating architecture architecture diagrams or creating design documents that you'll share with your team for review. You'll be doing code review and architectural reviews. You're going to participate in a lot of planning processes such as Scrum for the sprint planning, which is usually every two weeks, and even long-term planning, which is quarterly and yearly planning processes and giving your input. Basically coding when you just start is probably at most going to be 70 to 80 percent of your time because of all the other things that your role demands. And as you get more senior, you're actually going to be doing less coding because you're also going to be mentoring other people, participating in more strategic conversations with different stakeholders in the company. And the kind of impact and contribution you'll be making is going to be different than just being the person implementing the work. The second thing I learned is that the work you do touches so many different components and that's why collaboration and coordination become really really important in this job. When I was starting out I had no idea how critical communication and collaboration are to my success as an engineer because I honestly thought that most of the time I'll just be working on my own. I thought it would be quite similar to how when I was a student I was working on just my projects, right? But it's really not like that. In professional software development there's essentially a pipeline to product development. First product management managers do research into requirements and then you as an engineer you need to learn read and understand these requirements and often as you start thinking about the technical implementation you're going to be adding to it by uncovering more scenarios then you're going to be thinking about what are the dependencies for this work to be done both on the product side and the technical side and often that means understanding what other teams are doing or what other engineers on your team have done and whether you have the dependencies for your work already there for you to even start only then you're going to start thinking about the approach of your work and probably having a conversation with your team and tech lead about the design architecture of what you're doing. Only then you're going to start working on the actual code, which is just like one part of this big pipeline. Once you finish writing your code, you're going to go through a code review process, which usually takes a couple days where your team reviews your code. Then the code enters the code base, and at the end of the sprint, the code gets released into production. So as you can see, there's quite a process that needs to happen, not to mention that you will also have people testing the code, and so there will be some kind of handoff between your work and QA. So just remember that coding is only one part of this big pipeline. So as 
a result of this, you'll have to talk to other engineers, you'll have to collaborate and coordinate that the piece you're working on fits into the main system that's being developed. You also have to collaborate with product and QA and the handoffs. And sometimes you'll be working either with your own team that does the releasing of the code or maybe with another team that manages releases. So essentially, yes, you are responsible for the piece that you wrote, but you're part of a bigger system. And that is why coordination and collaboration are just part of your job. This leads me to the next big thing I realized how crucial communication is as an engineer. Because of the previous point of collaboration, communication becomes basically your main tool to do the job. Aside from the implementation you do, you actually have to talk quite a lot about the work that you do, not only to other engineers and team members and product managers, but you're also going to have to talk to people from other teams that need to understand the functionality you're developing. And you'll have to talk to a lot of people from multidisciplinary roles, such as product, UN, testing and you'll need to always be almost like a spokesperson for the work that you're doing. That is a skill that you need to learn on how to communicate to audiences of different technical competence. So basically it's important that you understand what you're developing from a functionality perspective, from a requirements perspective, and from the technical perspective. So as you talk to different audiences with different technical levels, you're able to go into the right level that they need. It's almost like translating to a different language because really different disciplines at the company speak their own language and have their own understanding of what's happening. So if you're just starting out as a software engineer, check out my website on how I can help you as a career coach as you navigate your first job in tech. The next thing I learned is that building the right product is more important than building sexy technology. So what do I mean by that? Have you ever heard the term over-engineering? Sadly, this is a really common thing that happens to engineers. Engineers get excited by engineering. They get excited by program languages, different frameworks, different architectures and basically technology and sometimes they're really just hungry for finding a use for all this technology however what's really important is to remember that the goal of any company working on a product is to develop a product that users want and so sometimes what happens is that engineers get a little bit sidetracked into the technology they want to use and they may pick the wrong tool for the job they may create an architecture that's a complete overkill for what's required they may just use a language just because it's fun and sexy and new rather than thinking about what is easier to maintain over time. So this is what's commonly called over-engineering. Basically creating a system that's completely over the top for the problem you're actually trying to solve. And at times it gets so bad that you end up building the wrong product just because you were really excited about the technology. So don't let that happen to you and remember this bottom line. Technology and engineering are just tools for building products for people. And unless people want that technology, there is no use of building this technology. So always remember that at the end of the day, your company is building a product the users need to find valuable. And it does take maturity and time as an engineer to understand which tool to pick for which problem. So that on the one hand, you're not overcomplicating and overengineering, and on the other hand, you're not oversimplifying and making that technology fragile and brittle. This is really where mastery and artistry in the craft of engineering comes in. And the last big learning for me is that I am part of a team. So what do I really mean by that? This is really the balance between between the individual contribution that I thought I'll be making versus being an individual on a team. I really didn't realize when I was starting to which extent every engineer is part of a team. And a team has goals, deadlines, and a product to deliver. This means that as a member of the team, I can't ignore how my work affects the team. So if I don't do a good job and I'm not diligent and my code has bugs, this will end up costing the team time and resources to fix that. Also, if I don't do a good job communicating and coordinating, then there might be gaps in the implementation. There might be overlap in terms of the work being done. There might be miscalculation around the timeline of when the work will get delivered. So this is where it's really important to understand that when you're acting as an individual, you're still affecting the team. So that's why being diligent, communicative, and collaborative is going to make the whole team a lot more productive and 
closer to meeting its goals. The other thing I've realized is that I can also influence the team culture. If there were things that I didn't like about the team, I actually realized that I had the power to set an example. For example, I could make suggestions on how to improve processes in our sprint planning. I could give people on the team kudos so that they feel recognized. Or I could suggest improvements where I saw technical debt. Basically, by me understanding that I have a power as a member of the team, I was able to actually change the team and so what I mean by that is I'm signaling to others that it's okay to behave that way and this is where you really do have power as an individual of the team the bottom line is whenever you want to see any change happen always lead by example so if you just started working what are the things that you are noticing that are different than what you expected about this job I hope that this video was helpful for you to prepare for being a software engineer and knowing what it will be like in practice and if you're just starting out and you would love some support in the first six months of your job, talking about your experiences, then look at my website leadersemerging.com and the different coaching packages I have of how I can help you as a career coach navigate tech for the first time. So please like this video and subscribe to my channel. See you in the next video.